Hello and welcome to the Blueprint of the Universe channel where we are beginning to look again at the series upon Taoism. It's a study of shamanism and Chinese culture. And the previous videos um, have led us to this point where we are currently looking at the physical map that's been drawn out by the development of um, basically looking at the universe and plotting its possibilities, its reactions in a more complete and universal scale rather than a kind of individual and refined level like we do in the West. It's more of a complete um, journey taking into account other uh, forces within the universe, applying upon it at all times and therefore making it impossible um, to kind of not predict but Equally, everything has a positive and negative reaction in the universe, and we make a change somewhere, something else changes to create a balance somewhere else. And this is a universal truth, it's just on a scale that we can almost never really comprehend as a human mind being confined to such a physical level of vibrational reality. And we start to look at the, we looked at the idea of the yin and the yang coming from the Tao, the division of two, and how that creates the points of four, north, east, south, and west, four affecting all seasons or periods of any given physical space or time. And then we looked at how those divisions naturally become into a layer of three lines, the triagrams, where from that we, we build on eight possibilities of the yin and yang. For example, the three um, yin lines of earth because they're at the bottom extreme three yang lines of heaven directly opposite and then we have a fire and earth which are uh, predominantly one but one of so two yin and one yang and two yang and one yin and it's that middle point on the cycle and then the eight divisions within that so there's uh, it's a north east south and west but then we have north east north west for example south east south west and then the central point of nine, how these nine points with the yin and yang in the center represent the nine points of the Kabbalah, and it's almost identically, and can be displayed on both a X and Y axis, or horizontal and uh, vertical, to create a three-dimensional map of any space in the universe, be it a um, perceived space of the mind or the consciousness, or a very physical space of the body. The room around you, the home, the building, the town, the village, state, the country, continent, planet, solar system. And that's the kind of point we've got to, whereas in every level, that same complete space, say, let's say the room exists. So when we look at yin yang, yin yang creates that circular space, that room where these positive forces, however, we're just simply looking at it in more detail. And when we divide that into four walls, into them, four walls and four corners, and then from there we can divide it even further, which is where we're at now. So if we take the eight triagrams, for example, we can then build upon that to create a more complex perceived space. And that's very important, a perceived space. The space exists whether we believe it is there or not or how deep we will feel. Some people sit in a room and never really even look at the room they're in. But other people in the room will instinctively look and try and understand every single piece of the room. And both people are in the same room, the room still exists, but it's just a level of perceived reality or inquisitiveness of um, understanding we look at. And that's the same around us. The world exists around us in this constant flow of Tao, yin and yang balancing one another. But the detail we look at it as an individual is up to ourselves, according to our level of uh, want or willpower, which is the energy of things. And that's where energy drives the matter as it is, creates change, perceived change or physical change. And so we take the eight triagrams and we simply double them up. And by doubling them up, we get a series of 64, or what we call hexagrams, because there are now six lines. Three on the top and three on the bottom. 
186 total lines. And what's interesting about this is this creates the full basis of what we call the I Ching that was written about um, by King Wen. And this was actually before uh, those, for example, um, Lao Tzu and um, the creator of Taoism. Um, and we have Confucianism and Taoism. And they were both kind of made or labeled or brought into being after King Wen um, came up with the idea or expanded upon the idea of the I Ching and the 64 hexagrams because it's a natural progression. The actual form is there, but again, the understanding or the in-depth knowledge of it came later because he simply mapped out what was obvious there. It's like looking at the world and saying, there is the world. And then a thousand years later, 500 years later, somebody then going, oh, maybe we should look at the world. That's basically what happened. And it doesn't really matter if we understand it or not, it's there and it works. And it's just simply our level of detail of dividing it into eight portions, four portions or 64 portions. That's, that's all it is. And then we pick a level of vibration to then study at that point. And most often the I Ching is kind of related to the mind or a perceived level of development of consciousness because it became a philosophy of spirituality where simply the 64 triograms were parts of the mind and that became completely lost then to its true meaning because we simply stopped linking it to all things and just because one individual wrote a book and started to describe each each hexagram as a form of consciousness that we simply lost what it was and I mean the I Ching itself does kind of state um, kind of all of its connections of vibratory level, but it's just something we kind of attached onto that it was linked more with the human mind, whether that's to do with ego or what, I'm not sure. But actually, by creates more confusion than it uh, actually tried to solve because it's very much like handing someone a jigsaw puzzle. Now, if you hand someone a jigsaw puzzle, that's already built, you know what it's meant to look like. You can see where the places are, you can see the picture on it. Now, then you're told to pull it apart and then put it back together, and that's it's a difficult task depending on how many pieces there are, in this case 64. However, at least you know what it was before you were trying to make. However, if someone gave you a bag of pieces and said, right, now put that together, together it will take a lot longer because you're literally just guessing where things fit together uh, based on a piece-by-piece -piece basis. And that's basically what we have in the Aching is because we've forgotten or it's not been taught to us or it's not been written down simply enough. What the original map was, and it's like saying, it's, if someone cut a map out of the world, of all the countries, and you try to put them together, it would be an almost impossible feat. It would take a very long time. But it would be done, but it's extremely difficult. Now, you add something like this, where each piece is actually a mental concept, and not a physical thing, then it becomes impossible um, to put them back together in the right order. But I think the more the Westerners begin to look at the eastern side of things, we try and understand it in the way of a western point of view where this must fit together, this must work, this must mean something and we're trying to put it back together and even now you look and look online and there's millions of graphs of people trying to put the pieces back together in a physical way and a lot of them are lost in a way but some of them hold truths because it's just, it's almost guesswork because we don't really know what it was that was intended until we go back and look at the four corners, the eight triograms, and we look and say, that is a map. And this is simply an expanded version of the map, just like we have the zodiac. 
and that's very similar that's very similar to because we look at things like tarot cards and tarot cards are exactly the same situation where we've forgotten what they are we've forgotten what they were meant for and we're using them in a way that is lost and we're trying to put them back together by meaning but we've forgotten where they go and we're just simply guessing whereas the tarot cards actually form exactly the same identical map as the tree of life the Kabbalah, the I Ching, and the eight triagrams, the little, the little nine heaven, nine, nine cauldron diagram. And it's the same thing because we're all looking at the same universe and we're just simply seeing it in different languages. And so the 64 triagrams is actually not very important at all to know what each individual hexagram is or means because we can spend a lifetime guessing and trying to look at each one. I've done this you know, at very early stages of learning and it just, it's almost incomprehensible. You'd need a lifetime to study it in that fashion. However, it can take you not very long at all once you know the overall picture because you can see what the goal was. You can see the position of all the 64 triagrams and then you can say well actually because i know what the four points mean or the four areas of the perceived um, uh, season of whatever cycle it is that you're looking at and then these 64 are just simply fragmentations of that or points on the path it's more specific changes in energy or time or points of position around the central circle that's all it is it's extremely simple but in a very complex way because again we start to begin to build upon that because this map can also be built not on a two-dimensional level but x and y axis to make a three-dimensional model of a tourist field or any tourist any field or any circular um, space or square space depending on uh, how the physical side manifests so we have a top and a bottom which is always yin and yang we always have those nodes of north and south because we have two earth trigrams one on top of the other and therefore pure earth we have eight yin lines now or ultimately we have the opposite which are eight yang lines which is heaven and heaven um, or heaven and earth in the triagrams the same name so we have two fixed points of positioning and then the rest fill themselves in according to where they are on the graph and the circle and what we have is pairs so when we begin to look at the actual true order of the 64 di uh, tri hexagrams excuse me we have reverse pairs so we have for example um say earth on the uh, uh, we could i'm just going to pick two random ones so um fire on the top and water on the bottom and then it's opposite pair the next number is the opposite way around so fire on the, on the bottom and water on the top and it's because the the polar opposites of each other but balance so they create balance just like we have um, pairs of in dna we have two sides of the spiral creating a line in the center equal poles because when we start to actually map out the space of the 64 triagrams it becomes less x and y axis and more spirographical because when we move around the torus field it's spiraling around in a circle into the center and back out again like the figure of eight or the aerobarus or the snake eating its own tail um, all these different analogies and all the different cultures and it's this continual spiraling positive negative forces on different levels according to the vibrational position of heaven and earth or solid and immaterial mind and body but you start to get these changes and it's the spiraling action within this circular space that we can map out and we can put this spherical model over anything the human body the human magnetic field the mind the planet the solar system 
it's all the same thing. So actually, by trying to spend a lifetime understanding each individual hexagram of which there's 64, it can be as figurative as we like when it comes to meaning. And there's books upon books upon books trying to explain it, and other books on other people's explanations and so on. But we need to go back to the root, which is what it was created for, because that's what we saw in the first book. And there's an old proverb that I absolutely never seem to move away from, and it's the idea of the people sitting in the room looking at the candle in the centre of the room. And the candle or the light casts shadows around the room. And over time, people stop looking at the candle and begin to look at the shadows and forget that it's the candle causing the light and the shadows in the constant variations. And to understand the shadows, we must remember that all light comes from a single point in the centre of the room. And that is the very basis of shamanism, that all ideas, no matter who has created them, where in time they are, which culture, they all come from the same singular singularity of human beings' consciousness, or perceived consciousness, which is the very definition of shamanism, which is the very definition of Taoism, because Taoism is a balance of the universe and how we perceive it. And that's why it's so important that we look at this map and we say, well, it's just an expansion of the prior teaching. It's not instead of, it's not extra, it's not an additional or a side. It's just an expansion. And anything that expands can be contracted. And we must always look at something new on an expanded level to look into it, to explore it. But then we must always relate it back to its original meaning. And this is the same in every culture, every system. We learn the card of a tarot and then we apply it back to the Kabbalah. We learn Enochian magic and we apply it back to the teachings of the Kabbalah. We look at Ayurveda and we teach we bring it back to the shamanic roots of the Indus people. And it's the same here. 64 hexagrams always come back to the eight trigrams, which always come back to the yin and yang, which always come back to the Tao. And that's very, very simple in a way, but equally somehow extremely difficult to understand because even the Tao is extremely difficult to understand because it's constantly shifting and changing and moving to create balance in the universe. And so what we are also looking at, what's also interesting is if we looked at the three the, the triagrams or the three lines in the triagrams and we identify them, that represents the body, the spirit and the mind, the three levels of a person's vibration or development. So when we add three more lines, we have to think, well, what does that also mean on that level? And it's actually quite simple because we have the internal external. So the bottom triagram is exactly that. It's the human being's body, physical, spiritual and mental. Are these developed at what level, at what part of the cycle is this person on? But then the third or the, the, three, the next set of three lines that are on top of that are actually the heavenly body, spirit, and mind. And that is actually how the body interacts on an external level with these three. So you can have a developed body, but how does it interact with the physical world outside of them? How well do we apply that? You can have a very well established human being physical body for example let's say a bodybuilder who's very strong developed in every way but can they apply that physical force in a productive physical way if they're just simply doing it for an aesthetic reason then no so we have if we look at the triagrams if we take the top half put it next to the bottom half on the left we have a developed body a yin uh, so yeah a yin line 
a, a yang line and then we have on the right on the bottom level a yin line because it's not interacting with the environment on the outside but equally we could have someone who interacts with the human outside such as like a carpenter or a stonemason and develops and builds and creates but is very sickly and therefore we have the opposite and this goes for the same with the soul the energy we can have spirit we can have energy we can have willpower but how well do we bring that to the outside world if we have that internally but don't apply it then again we're wasting it but equally if we are affected by the outside world and the people around us but we are sickly in spirit ourselves because we feed off their emotion to get things done we need external motivation then we are underdeveloped internally but able to be developed externally and equally in the mind are we clever are we self-developed or are we simply just not applying that? so it basically in effect it's like common sense and book smart and so we can be developmental outside, we can have a massive empire of financial um, security of a million different projects going on at once, but that doesn't mean we're clever, that just means we can apply it. And so we have these levels and it's like the internal free lines and the external free lines, the macro microcosm and the macrocosm, and that's also what these hexagrams can be used for. So when we look at the I Ching and people are describing, well, the first line of the 34 um, hexagram represents this. That's what we're looking at on a very basic level. It's the body of the body, the spirit of the body, the mind of the body, the body of the world around us, the spirit of the world around us, and mind of the world around us. Equally, something that hasn't been done is an expansion upon this. Now really, what we could do is add a extra triagram and extra three lines and have nine lines because each one of the nine lines would represent one of the nine stages of development. We have the nine points of the Kabbalah, the nine points within the basic eight triagrams. We have the nine planets, the nine elements, the nine metals. We have the nine spirits, nine gods because it's a common theme or a reality that there are nine noticeable divisions in parts of the mind or any vibrational level colors for example nine colors um, and we could then apply that theory to that level of development so what we could do really what someone as far as my knowledge is aware that has never been done is to expand upon that further and we're basically making the sphere because we, we could say as a symbolic representation of this but the yin and yang is the center of the room and then the eight trigrams is the wall of the room 64 trigrams could be outside of the room i.e uh, outside of the house so let's say around the perimeter but then outside of your perimeter you have the outside world of a neighborhood which could be these extra trigrams um, not even hexagrams it would be the next stage almost because there's nine lines in it. and we could keep going and going and going and going and expanding and expanding and expanding but equally as we expand the circle we're actually contracting our focus because when we look at eight triagrams even though we're contracting it down as a circle we are expanding our mind over a larger area one eight Whereas when we look at 64 hexagrams, when we're expanding the area, we're actually contracting our mind because we're only looking at 164. So that just creates balance itself because we're both expanding and contracting at the same time, which is exactly what we do in the tarot, in the true meaning of the tarot, when we look at um, the cups and discs, swords and wands, the four different ways of the mind balancing one another. So we can apply all this to the mind and the physical space because it's built on the same core principles of the universe. So I hope that's helped but equally caused a lot of questions at the same time because 
that should one if you already look at the hatching that should help you almost create um, almost a controversial I hope concept where actually it makes you think of it in a different way even though it's the same thing you've looked at before but equally it should allow you to if you've not looked at it before see it in a more comprehensive manner um, and have been able to apply it to the western philosophies you're already used to but equally if you come in from no philosophies then it should give you a good base to build upon to see um, and expand upon in this system and other systems as well so I hope you've enjoyed this I hope you've got many questions from this um, and if you do want to leave a comment I will try and answer as many of them as I can and try and help clear anything up that maybe wasn't as clear there's a lot to cover in such a small video um, because it is the I Ching at the end of the day is a thousand people's life's work so it's difficult to and press it down into such a small video um, but hopefully we'll expand upon this in the future so I would like to go through each of the 64 trigrams individually um, a very time consuming exercise but well worth it and just kind of maybe explain more more comprehensively about what uh, that represents on both the physical and the mental level um, but I hope, I hope it's helped I hope you follow me through the rest of the series in this because we will look at the energetic side equally in tandem with this and how it affects. And we're going to start building upon the 64 triagrams now into the more um, unified uh, area because yes, the physical and the energetic sides are divided in the way they look at things and the way they work, but eventually they become joined again and work together and that's the point we're at and that's the point we're going to progress to. Hope you've liked it. Please like, subscribe, and follow us as it really does help the channel, allows us to build a much greater um, uh, library of understanding that we can pass on to others. As that's the main goal here is to preserve knowledge, pass on knowledge, and also develop knowledge in our generation. Um, so please allow us to do that by just simply clicking a few buttons on screen. And that's it for now. Thank you very much, and bye bye.